welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 118 of Planning Face Syndicate. Thank you all so much for joining us. Tonight, we're going to be talking some store champs. We're going to dedicate a little bit more time uh, for store champs this weekend because I feel we are getting behind. We aren't even going to be able, we have so many of them, we aren't even going to be able to cover this weekend's uh, uh, London Open. So we are going to be covering the Berlin Open. Uh, a couple of them from the 17th and some uh, other overseas ones that have not we have not covered yet. So we're going to spend a little bit of time doing that. Also tonight, we have our new Academy 101 segment, and we're going to be reviewing medalists, right, to kind of help you prepare for Michigan GT, uh, Crossroads, and PAX coming up here in the next few weeks. So we're going to be covering Empire tonight. Um, Next week, we'll, we're going to skip Scum, and next week, we'll be covering Resistance lists. Uh, but tonight, we're going to be covering Empire lists and see how it goes. With that being said, we will also try, I, I'm pretty sure we'll get to our extended meta discussion. We have an extended meta discussion we kind of wanted to start, uh, kind of see where it flows. Um, there is some extended discussion or extended tournament going on at PAX. And so we kind of wanted to bring uh, a discussion in for that as well. With that being said, let me bring in my co-host for tonight. Please welcome JJ, the Lions fan. Gridiron, how are you tonight, sir? <laughs> yeah, I'm slowly realizing that the more I wear this, the more the Lions are winning, and it's very disturbing to me. Um, but yeah. <laughs> you know, what? what's the record now? Uh, I think they're 2-1 right now. So it's a little crazy, right? It's a little crazy to me. I, I can't believe it. Are you sure they're not three and one? Yeah, they're three and oh, one. Three and one. Say, yeah, I think sorry. they won Thursday. They yeah, played right. they won Green Thursday. Bay Thursday. Yeah, and, they beat Green Bay. And yeah. and funny funny note, uh Detroit Lions fans actually bought out uh the stadium <laughs> at Green Bay and uh, there was more Lions fans in the stadium than than Green Bay Packers fans. I thought that was hilarious. That is pretty fun. Joining me with his Dahlia Murder shirt. Looks yeah. new to me. Looks like a brand new shirt. Alex, how are you doing tonight, sir? Oh, I'm doing well. Oh, just uh, had a little star champ yesterday. That was super fun. Had a weird interaction with Dirge. Scum Dirge. Uh, shot a plasma torp at him. Rolled hit, hit, crit. Crits are canceled first. He rolled one of eight. And then he canceled one of the... Uh, Hits into a crit and only took one crit off a crit hit hit. Somehow that works. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I think I think we I think scum dirge is kind of one that we all kind of passed over on, right? We always said, ah, eh, this really isn't that ability isn't super good. But in fairness, like I have seen it, it again. If you if you take dirge and focus fire them down, yeah, the hit the the hit to a crit is worthless, but. With the one or two shots coming in, it's I think it's pretty good. Zach had some good um some good success with it. So Or you just be like Nick Sperry and only roll crits. Then you don't have to convert any. <laughs> there you go. You can do that too. Um fun, fun, fun. So hope you all had a good weekend. I was in Ohio and I was a little too tired. Um Saturday morning to make the three and a half hour drive back to Ypsilanti, um, then to play in a tournament. Um, I would have had to gotten up at like six thirty if I wanted to shower, seven thirty if I didn't want to shower. Um, and I would have made it like just in time for roll off. And so um since I had somebody with me and we had some issues at home with our bathtub my wife wanted help with, I felt it was probably not beneficial to force the tournament entry for myself but i'm glad you had a good time i see there matt ran a very crazy scum list like i don't even understand how his list works uh and he didn't do well enough for me to want to like invest time into it but it was a pretty crazy list he took duncan's list and then replaced cad with cad so that's all he did <laughs> it just i don't know i didn't understand it but uh anyway so I'm glad you had fun. I, I got to see Eddie Azard. I don't know if you've seen them. Um, she is a European comedian. So uh, probably a lot of people don't know who she is. Um, 
but she's done stand up since like I was in high school. So originally before Zach passed away, uh, I had, he, while he was in the hospital, I had gotten tickets for me, him and uh, his brother, Matt, uh, that I'm friends with uh, for the three of us to go. Cause we've never seen Eddie at all. And um, when she came around, it was kind of like, it felt kind of like a once in a lifetime opportunity to go see her. So we did. Um, and then unfortunately Zach passed away. So I had like an extra ticket um, that I ended up selling uh, to someone else uh, for a little bit cheaper. Um, but I got most of my money back from it and helped somebody else out. But uh, like, if you've never been to Columbus, they have like a, it's like the majestic, but like fancier. It's like super nice. Um, holy crap. And they didn't metal detect anybody either. Like we just like walked in. Like, I was like, oh, this is weird. This Not must Michigan, be an Ohio no. thing. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that was kind of fun. If you, in fairness, if you have not been there and you do live in that area or get to Columbus, I, I will tell you right now, like I'm not an Ohio fan personally, no offense to Ohio. Um, and I'll tell you getting there to Columbus from like Detroit area is a pain in the ass. Like it's like two lane roads on each side. Like there's no, where's the highways, Ohio? Like where is my highways? <laughs> you have to pay for them. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> well, there was some good ones going into Columbus from where we were that were like anything more than 65 miles an hour. So, you know, and you know me, I'm the super uh, law abating citizen who drives the speed limit. So, yeah. Yeah. I was didn't get fun. a speeding ticket on my way up to Grand Rapids for that concert. <laughs> <laughs> or not concert, a uh, tournament. So. Uh, I guess we don't really have a lot of announcements. If you're listening to this and you aren't signed up for Michigan GT, it would be amazing if we could hit 16 people. I would really like to give Store Champ invite away. It seems in Michigan we are not able to somehow hit 16 people in the Store Champs. We have, like, all these invites we want to give away, but we can't seem to get everybody to, like, commit to, like, a weekend or something like that. Yeah, there's so. a whole bunch of us, and then we just don't... <laughs> For some reason or another, just can't make it, or it gets cut. A lot of people bail at the last minute. Got it. So, I'm really hoping we have enough to, you know, give out the store kit. We will still have prizes. Uh, we'll probably still give out the store kit stuff anyway. And they usually do some money back, um, basically in some free ships. So, there is that kind of fun stuff. So, if you're looking for a store champ next weekend in Michigan, it's in Lansing, so it's like right in between. The two, no hotel required. None. We are not doing a day two. You literally can come um, and play. So, yeah. and if we get 32 people, I'll just separate <laughs> into two separate store chants so we don't have to do two on top God. We'll just do two separate store chants and call it a day. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's definitely a good way to go, right? Because you want to try to get, you know, everything done and completed on the same day so that we, you know, people don't have that added expense of like trying to find a hotel or travel long distance in order to come back for like a cut and stuff. I think it's just a good way to, you know, have a great time, play a, a fun tournament and, you know, go home hopefully with an invite, you know, be great. Fun, fun. All right. So why don't we begin with our pattern analyzer segment and let's start reviewing some of these store champs. It's from the UK from TNX Troll Trader. Um, a pretty basic, uh, they didn't do a top cut. Uh, there was some Firecast people there. Um, they did have one 4 0. I don't know who Dale Crafted is uh, at all, but I don't think it's Dale Cromwell. So. But they did have, uh, for the most part, a pretty similar build, except for their chopper. So, JJ, what list came in number one for the tnx championship so we we have a rebel alliance list here we got chopper with magma yarrow zeparelios veteran turret gunner uh the ghost title just for fun and the ion cannon turret 
followed by Harrison Dula in the A wing with Swarm Tactics, and then we got the standard loadout Han with Perceptive Copilot, Baston, Trick Shot, and the title, and then A wing Wedge Antilles with Marksmanship and Crack Shot to round off this list. Uh, pretty interesting uh, list actually, because you know when you take a look at this, Chopper is a complete menace with that Magpa Yaro uh, being able to. Uh, essentially, if he takes a shot, he gets a free target lock at you, and then he's going to shoot you twice with Veteran Turn Gunner and Ion Cannon Turret. Um, it is a really powerful shot. Um, now, the only weakness I see with that particular chopper build is that you can't do the double tap at range zero. So if somebody uh, bumps into you, which is what you want with chopper to get them double, um, double jammed. Um, you're not going to be able to do that double tap into them. Now, if there is somebody else in the um, at, in arc at uh, range one to two uh, with uh, with the iron cannon, you could just shoot them. Um, but still, this is a really powerful um, list. There, I mean, if I'm Hera, if I have the opportunity to swarm uh, chopper up to a six and take a double tap with that big gun on the on the VCX, that that's going to put in some hurt. Do you appreciate they put in Zeb there for? what I can only assume is theme because it doesn't do anything on chopper. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. It's there just to fill that one point. Exactly. <laughs> He's the chopper for chopper, essentially. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like uh, it, it only, you can only spend focus tokens at range zero, but chopper doesn't have focus tokens. He just hey, you ain't going to have any here. Exactly. And you probably don't because you just got <laughs> double jammed. So just flexing on people. <laughs> I don't know. I find it funny. Is it just yeah. so that you can shoot and be able to use your target lock if somebody runs into you? Is that is that no, why? Specifically no. focus tokens. Yeah, only focus tokens. Yep. Oh. Which Chopper doesn't get. Unless yeah. Hera gives him one. True. Oh, so yeah. Hera could. Good point. Good point. Yeah. yeah. It is the only way. Or, I don't know. No, you have like Hera. Babu and you'd throw double jams onto you and you can still... <laughs> <laughs> mess it up and just shoot with the focus anyways so i have one other question and i don't want to spend a million hours on this list but i do i do kind of like like i do kind of like this list a little bit the one question i have um is you can replace wedge with sabine a wing is sabine a wing better than wedge a wing or is wedge a wing just better because it reduces a green die every time um i think in this particular list i think wedge makes more sense mainly because He's an initiative four, which you know it's not it's not the best initiative. It's right in the middle, uh, but when you're facing off against other I fours uh, with with a wedge being able to reduce their agility by one, and then on top of that, use crack shot. Um, if somebody's already been hit by Han and Chopper, uh, wedge is just that that ship that's going to go in there and just take them out um, and pretty much guarantee that kill. So uh, I think he is in this particular case a better choice for the list. He's also very good against like arcs, which are you know relatively popular right now because they just don't have agility when wedge shoots at them. Yep. Turns out you can't uh, you can't give out uh, focus tokens to modify zero dice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fair enough. All right, Alex, the runner up, I believe the runner up. Yep, they were three and one with a higher SSO. Um, was the old jester ran a resistance list? What they were Chewbacca? What is this Chewbacca yes. nonsense here? Uh, I love me some Chewbacca lists. This is Chewbacca <laughs> plus four, except for three of them are X Wings, <laughs> which I love. Uh, so you got Chewbacca with trick shot, ray gunner, a hot shot, tail blaster, dead man switch, and the title. Just a crazy Chewbacca build. Uh, LO with heroic and optics and marksmanship. Very aggressive LO. You see that occasionally. Uh, Staff Wexley with heroic ferrosphere and R6D8. Just Pava with M9G8 and Baffle. And then BB8 with ATP and Han Solo. Everybody loves the ATP. I, I tell you it. what, I do not like ATP should never be taken in any list ever anymore because range zero shots are a thing. Yeah, maybe and, they should, you know, it'd be kind of cool if they eroded it to say range one through three shots, right? Then you never have to take a range zero shot with yeah. it. Um, yeah, I just, I mean, especially because BB 8 generally does things like block people with the 
system phase wonkiness. So it's you're just like shooting at the, the worst shot you can. So here, the question I have is here, would you replace trick shot with um, engine upgrade and maybe, I don't know, marksmanship, I guess. Like, I don't know what else at one point you would use. I downgrade it to engine and then bump hot shot tail up to contraband. All right. I've been, yeah, I, I've I would probably. Sorry. I mean, I, I would also consider like dropping hot shot and trick shot for. I mean, would that give you enough for Notorious? Nope, you can't do Ray oh, you're Notorious. One. You're off by one. Oh, dang. I was actually to say, nice. most of my Chewbacca builds I've been building lately, I've actually dropped Ray Gunner for Notorious, so it's actually extra punishing to actually shoot at Chewbacca. Um, but good. man, you just do the... Uh, if you happen to, like, contraband that turn, uh, someone, like, blows up one of your ships, or, or you, you blow up Chewbacca, and then you just boost into him regardless of you're stressed or not and then dead man switch him <laughs> after you shoot at him that's great Hilarious. actually i like that <laughs> i've done it before it's so fun yeah i just think i will get rid of trick shot i don't know i i guess i don't know the hot shot tail blaster has to be for something it's i two points i i guess maybe it's yeah it's just, just two points just and you points. don't want yeah novice tech for some reason I would rather have novice tech personally, but that's just me. Yeah, um, same. I do like the dead man switch though. <laughs> I won't lie and say that's kind of that's kind of a cool gimmick. Um, God, could you imagine if you could have dead man switch and notorious and Ray? How awesome that would be! Yeah, that was last season. <laughs> yep, that would just that's be like the best. Chewbacca. <laughs> Ugh. All right. Silly. Well, cool. Congratulations uh, to that store champ. The next one we have is from Boardlandia in Wisconsin, and they have a couple of different, more unique style lists. Again, no tough cut. They had 16 people. Um, I like whoever Utini is. Um, I feel like I need to change my name on Roll Better to Utini just because that, that's pretty <laughs> awesome. I like it. Um, looks like Brad Path faced off against Andrew Path. So I'm guessing... I'm guessing brothers, maybe cousins. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know who they are, but um, Alex, what? <laughs> yeah, no, I Where, got this. <laughs> what? What is the the what is this list? Tell me what it is. Well, first, I want to shout out Travis Johannesson because he was uh, one of my opponents at Worlds, and he's flying almost exactly the same list as he did at Worlds, and I can respect that because he was on the Merle train then. Uh, yes, but Brad Path, his list for Republic is a six ship list. He has SOC Oddball, SOC Wolf, SOC Jag, Padme with Marksmanship Pass with Protons, it's generally what you see her as, then Slider and Boost, both with Marksmanship, Dead Eye, and Synchronized Council. I... Uh, Jag can pass off his lock to either of them. Only Boost will get the benefit because Slider's at I 4 and Jag's I 3. Uh, but if you take a lock with, like, Slider, uh, you can shoot, and then if Padme's range 1, you can pass her the lock if you really needed to for a Proton Torpedo. Otherwise, yeah, you just don't believe in Dedicated. I guess. I just... Like, I get, I, I get the, the marksmanship, right? That's fine. Like, I understand that, but I don't understand Dead Eye Shot. Like, I, I know everybody continues to try to make Dead Eye Shot good, and it it's just... One point, and they have three points to load out. It just doesn't seem to work, I guess. He's got a bullseye. Well, I mean, like, boost is actually not too hard to bullseye things with um, if you set it up correctly, because you can do that. Um, but if you're not range boost. one, you're only throwing two dice. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean. I, I didn't say it was great. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just appreciate yeah, I mean, that you got all this passing of uh, focus tokens with Born for this and no ability to minimize your blanks. Just roll paint. That's all you got to do. Quick question. Um, so, what initiative are boost and slider? Boost are they... is three. Mark or a slider is four. Four. <laughs> so, okay. So, boost and jag can interact pretty well then because yes. of the sync council piece. Yes. I mean, I guess he could interact. Like jag just feels like like jag feels like the first target in this list. I'll say. I mean, oddball is. I don't know. I hate oddball, so maybe it's oddball. It's either oddball or jag 
are are the two pieces that you have to burn down even over wolf i think because oh jag usually does a lot more damage than wolf just because he always yeah. has locks yeah and jag can pass the lock at the end of the round because he's just going to get another one next round all yeah. every time he just gets another lock so i don't know i like the list in the aspect of it's it's interesting um like I think this would be a fun list to run. Maybe I'll run this uh, for our our Nickel City League. So I think I'm getting stuck with Republic. So this, oh, this, you got this, first order, buddy. I got first oh. order. And JJ is being stuck with Republic. Republic. You can fly boring yeah. things now. Oh, all right. Well, JJ, <laughs> this is a list you should run. Actually, yeah, it's something similar that I've been uh, testing out. I actually like this a lot. Now, I, I got to say, as a person who has been... Uh, running a bit of marksmanship and dead eye shot. Um, you, having a boost action helps out tremendously to help you line up those bullseyes uh, reliably. Um, definitely helps if you're higher initiative in order for you to do that. This list, just based on those upgrades, I mean, if they really wanted to maximize this, this list is going to stick together and group together onto one ship because you want ideally those lower initiatives to shoot after everybody at the same or higher initiative has against the ship so that way you can flip some of those uh, face down damage cards that are on that opponent um and hopefully you'll trigger like a direct hit or like a structural damage which would be ideal because now your two die gun becomes that much more potent um and um and that we can put in some extra damage there into your opponent there I, I don't see it being really valuable with the i3 but you know if you're able to get it off if you're able to get it off so yeah. Do you do you see a value in doing build your own wolf here if you're going to run three arcs? Probably well, you not, have now. Yeah, you have Jag in that list. So Wolf, actually, his Wolf Pack ability triggers very consistently. So you get the reroll. You get you just spend Jag's lock, and then Jag can reacquire it if Wolf's right next to him. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, the next list from Andrew is a list a list we've kind of seen before. We have Sabine Ren with Beskar, Han with Chopper, Perceptive, Bistan Engine, um, Luke, Boy Luke, and then we have Ezra Bridger in the Gauntlet, which people have been talking about that Tanner should be running a lot more of. Um, this one it's has... Nice. What's that? It's nice. It's a nice list. Yeah, this one has Compassion, Tristan Wren, Paris and Dula, Veteran Tail Gunner, the Knight Brother title, and Swivel Ring. Swivel, whatever. Um, and it's only because they changed some of that Knight Brother title. I didn't think Ezra could take it before. Um, he but could. He could he take it before? Yep. Okay. I don't yep. remember that. I've not seen it before. But I, I, I'm not so sure on the compassion, but I think it, Harris and Dula is kind of a cool call. Um, to put on there because it gives you some of that ability to be a little bit more flexible with your dial. Um, and I like that Harrison Dula crew is not, not extended uh, for once. We have something that's not extended that you can actually use with Hera. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I'm not, what, what, what is compassion benefit? Is it just to recharge your force? Is that, is that what no, it is? No, compassion is super useful. Yeah, if, if another one of your friendly suffers a pilot crit, uh, you can spend a force to uh, essentially prevent them from suffering it and then you suffer damage in their wake, essentially. So you're transferring over damage. And the best part about it is that, you know, you can essentially take out a very bad crit away from one of your other useful pieces like Han or Luke, for instance, like a blinded pilot would absolutely wreck them for their offense and then just turn it into just a regular damage over to Ezra. And since that gauntlet has 11 health, like you're ignoring it, it he's he's basically going to keep your better ships alive um, for for the remainder of the game. So it's it's a it's a pretty useful ability. The only weirdish uh, thing I see on here is like Tristan. Yeah, which is like okay. I guess you can turn more hits into crits. Things into crits. Luke's yeah. Protorp. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that can also be novice tech. Damn it. Yeah. 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 Or you can drop compassion, Tristan, and put contraband in there for for Ezra. Yeah. yeah. Which is really funny when you have Night Brother because you just do the, like the stop, even if you already stopped with Hera, right? And then you just get a evade probably, and yeah. then do your action. <laughs> And then your stress, you have Ezra's ability to convert one force into two results. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's really nice. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So I guess it sounds like compassion is is pretty good then, I guess. So, um, I don't know. I guess maybe give it a try, folks. I don't, I, I am excited to run that Ezra gauntlet a little bit, I think, um, over Chopper. It's just Chopper was my, like, I've never got to ran a VCX. So for me, like, running the VCX was super amazing. So, but and you get four dice. It's fun. You do get four dice. And I mean, you get to jam people if people run into you. So I, I, the best part, about the jamming is when people just run into you and it's just like here the better part would be is if you could j- pick who you jam like if you could jam the ship and then your second token could jam whoever else that would be even better um and you know what it what's really unbeneficial is when you jam double jam a ship and then you're fighting fo and then they go oh sweet now i have a jam ship in my arc and you're like oh fuck no <laughs> now you get three I dice a, i had a ray bump chopper and I had to take the red focus to get rid of one of those jam tokens and then use page on like an incoming shot before chopper shot me to acquire a target lock to jam off the other one in order to get it locked when I shot at chopper <laughs> or past him. It was, it was funny. It's like, no. All right. Let's move on to the next one is chaotic. Good. Chaotic. Good. X-wing star championship. Um, that's a crazy name for a store. This one, if you know who Mega Silver is, Mega Silver is uh was playing oh, yes. in this one. So pretty fun. Looks like again we seem to have a resistance theme here. I don't know what that is, but feels like uh too many resistance lists uh for my liking. Um but uh who wants to take clone snipes winning list? Yeah, I'll do it. It's a that's uh the resistance list. It is almost a five T seventy, but not quite what you expect because it has nine nub in there. Uh, who's five points? You don't usually see that. You had to downgrade down to a Y wing for that. Uh, but it has nine nub. It's got heroic HLC R sixty eight pattern analyzer. Probably the one I would run. Although man, I love Daredevil at nine nub. Uh, and then you yeah. have Elo with Heroic Predator Ferrosphere. Lulo with Heroic Elusive and Advanced Optics. Just don't want that shield upgrade. I guess. <laughs> and, and then you get the the red maneuvers that you do with Lulo all the time to recharge that elusive. It's heavy sarcasm there. Uh, <laughs> then you get Jess Pava with Bucket and Baffle which I like a lot. You get three charges off uh, R1, J5 there. And then you got Shazazaro, Wartime, M9G8, Dorsal. Because M9G8 is so good. Is Wartime worth it putting on Shaza? Yeah. At this point, would you just not want... I mean, I get it's the extra health. Like, I do get the extra health that is helpful because you don't have, like, a Poe or a Ray in this list. Um, So being able to tank a little bit more might be helpful, but... It's two points, and you'd have to give up dorsal if you wanted to do like targeting computer and engine upgrade. Um, it's so hard to give up the free calculates for my three bank boosting Y wings. Uh, but I, in, in a list like this, it kind of makes sense because you're probably just going to keep it next to like Jess. So, uh, do you want to shoot like this nine health? a Y wing or are you going to shoot Jess Pava? That's uh, you end up choosing the Y wing. So the two extra health is probably beneficial there. Yeah. And I think electronic baffle is very um, unique on Jess. I've not seen that before. Um, you see it occasionally because it's like two points and you have nothing else to bring. You're not bringing like under slug blaster cannon. You, you could though. You, you could point. do that. There's not enough outmaneuvers in the game for me to justify doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Other than it would be fun. I mean, what about funny reroll man? Can you imagine? Just think, you're gonna run Jess, and my funny reroll man's gonna get behind you, and then you're gonna regret it. And you're gonna be like, I should have run under slung bl- blaster cannon. And then I still win the game because I'm playing resistance, and you're playing CIS, so we're good. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I've been some <laughs> CIS list lately, so I don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a it's a cool list. I like nine knob a lot. 
Um, pretty useful, actually, with a lot of high initiative stuff. If you won the roll, you know, get the 4K behind them, know where they're at already. Get your uh, double action with Pattern Analyzer. All right, let's move on to the next list. Um, JJ, what Empire shenanigans do we have here? I see awesome. concussion bombs, too. Yeah, yeah, we do. So we got uh, Rear Emma Shurnu with Death Trooper, Star Fader, Agile Gunner, Baffle, and Ruthless and Dauntless Title. Lieutenant Lorear with Lone Wolf and Targeting Computer. Um, <clears throat> customizable Tomax friend with Bomblets, Barrage Rockets, and Sat Salvo. Uh, Captain Jonas with BT-1 Gunner, Barrage Rockets, and Sat Salvo. And then Major Rhymer with Concussion Bombs, Barrage Rockets, and Sat Salvo to round off this list. So we got three bombers uh, with Sat Salvo and Barrage Rockets. Um, that BT-1 is spicy because you can essentially uh turn those barrage rocket shots uh, with uh with crits assuming that the person that you're shooting at has stress which uh it would rack there in the list with death troopers it's almost a guarantee that they'll might end up having a stress there um so that just punishes them even further for having that stress uh while they're around rack uh so this is definitely a really, really nice list here i'm definitely interested to see how they actually ran this um, because I would assume that you put Rack on one side, the Bombers in the center, and then Revere on the other side in order to take advantage of the Lone Wolf. Uh, but this looks like a really solid list. Definitely a lot of beef to shoot through. Yeah, you've actually... Um, there's a trend upwards of like Rack, Revere, and Three Bombers uh, over the past couple months. A lot of people have been bringing it. Yeah. Which is cool. I like that Rack loadout. That's generally what I would bring. Got to have Vader somewhere in your list now. Yeah, I think Death Troopers right now is the new slum. If I only had Death Troopers for scum, things would be so much easier. <laughs> Maybe Night Night Troopers? No. No. Nope. <laughs> stop. We're done. Keep moving. All right. On to the next store, champs. Twin Ports Shipwrecked. Did we already do this one? Brad pa uh... that Brad Path's just getting around, baby. Like there you that, go. Yeah. this is this is a different one, and he made four and zero with this with his list again. All right, JJ, if you're playing you're playing Republic, you got to put this on the table. Um, <laughs> I think we just went over this list, so we're not we going to go over this list again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, the next one that we got up here, we got a scum list, uh, which made three and one here, which is really good. So we got Cad Bane with the, the Xanadu Blood title. Proton Cannons, Proton Bombs, Contraband Cybernetics, and Marksmanship. Cat is all about the crits in this list. We've got Dirge with Contraband Cybernetics, uh, Proton Cannons, and Predator. Uh, Dace Bonearm with the Moldy Crow title, Contraband Cybernetics, uh, Over 2 Modulators, Lando Carishian Crew, and Cutthroat. Our Lee's Hardrassian in the Y-Wing with uh, Connor Nets, Ion Cannon Turret. Lee Mackay with Ion Cannon Turret and Seismix, and then Bosk with Dead Men's and Marksmanship to round off this list. This is definitely a very jank list, I want to say. Uh, yeah. But man, it's got a lot of things that that's working for it. I mean, the I definitely love the Lando crew on base, uh, mainly because you're you're already gaining or stacking up focus tokens with these and being able to spend one to reroll dice on offense or defense with lando is really powerful um it just makes him that much more accurate or that much more harder to kill um and then cad and dirt are definitely the hammers in this list but you can't really count that our lease uh, our lease can while he stays alive can definitely punch and uh and do some damage here as well so yeah it's a very Sean list. That's what, that's kind of what I feel. <laughs> I, I'm not sure about that over to modulators on Dace Bone Arm. It seems uh, yeah. a little excessive. It's it's for Lando, right? You, you know, after you use that and you're holding two focus tokens, you're just going to get two strains at the end. Yep, he's right. Uh, yep, yep. I I know, I know. I'm, you know. I mean, you can also overtune claim and then um like spend the those tokens on offense you know you you're yeah like, okay JJ. yeah okay yeah yeah but I you can't hold focuses any... jj anymore right i hope they don't think cutthroat With works contraband hmm? moldy allows you to still keep it but you have it, over the calculates 
No, it's, it's a green tokens. Zone. It's green tokens. So you hold the green token, you get a strain. You don't spend it, you get a strain. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, look it up. Oh, I know yeah, this right. one very hardcore yes. because I've yeah, had yeah. I've Good done point. something similar with um independent um uh calculations and lost uh, wow. a tri fighter. Uh yeah. Or not independent, I'm sorry. Uh, network calculate and lost a tri fighter because of it. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I hope they, I mean, like you have caught throat, so you can recover that one charge and overtuned. Um, but I have seen a lot of people lately are just like, hey, cut throat, and then I'll just recharge my contraband. And I'm just like, that's not how that works anymore. <laughs> yeah. I would assume we're going to get benefit of the doubt to say cut throat or overtune is what it is. But again, you got to like, you got to be pretty so, bloody sure something's going to die. Okay, hang on. Okay, so now we're getting into a rules discussion, right? Because I'm rereading Overtune just to make sure I'm getting this correctly. It says, during the end phase, if your charge is inactive for each green token you remove, because you remove your tokens at the end of the end phase, you get a strain token. But yeah, you're, okay, not removing your, you're not removing your focuses. So calculates, yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely, you're going to lose those and you'll get strained for those. But you're not taking a strain for those focuses you're hanging on to. So... Only the I, again, third one that you got. Yeah, yeah. So edge edge case, but yeah. yeah. You know, you could just combine overtune and cutthroat and bring in like Babu or Enduring. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So wait, so because you hold them, you don't yeah, have you to don't take the strength. Yeah. Correct. Yep. All right. Well then I reverse my position and think it's a better it's better then. I, I wouldn't worry would about do that. I wouldn't <laughs> worry about the calculates then at that point. I mean, at that point, if somebody's shooting at Dace, Dace is probably going to die anyway. So I don't think you have too much to worry about. It's only it's got five health. Two agility, five health ship. I don't see why people think these things live very long. They don't. So, all right, let's move on to the Cro the Co the Croco. I don't know how to say that. The Croco. Um, Polish. Yeah, it's Polish, and <laughs> it doesn't say pierogi, and it doesn't say uh, sausage. So. <laughs> Um, I love. I want to go to. I want to go to Poland. I wish we could have gone to Poland. Anyway, this store champ. Um, they did five rounds instead of four because they must have had more than sixteen. So instead of doing a top cut, they just did a five round tournament. Um, looks like I threw an extra list in here because of Alex. <laughs> I gave an extra list because of Alex. Uh, yes. So there you go. Yeah, I appreciate that one. I see it. Yeah. So the very first list, the winner that who did go 5-0. and oh. No, he didn't. Why do I have Oscar as the winner? Don't know. Maybe right. there was like a top four cut and then he won out in the end. That's the only way I can assume that. That or I was smoking crack when I did this. It's like, <laughs> there's also that. <laughs> All right, I guess we're gonna skip the winner for a second here. That's what we're gonna do, and um, I can find out. And uh, yeah, yeah, no, it looks like there's a yeah, there's a top four cut or top eight cut, top eight cut actually, and he's okay. the one, one out. Yes. Okay, so I just put the wrong thing in here then. Okay. All right, I feel better. So Oscar did win then? Yes. Well, at least according to like Lift Fortress. All right, cool. So Oscar Ice won with Ray, Elo, Neonum, and Zori. Kind of a standard Ray build uh, with Nafis Tech Engine, Heroic, Rose, Finn, Elo with the IM9 G8, Heroic Workspin, Neonub with Pattern Analyzer, um, R6D8, HLC, and Zori with your favorite wartime loadout, Alex. Plants with torpedoes, dorsal, and R4. That's the only one you're bringing on. Yeah. So it's a pretty similar list. I think this is like, this is what Duncan ran, right? Or similar to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all the upgrades make sense. Like, it's, it's pretty solid. We just saw a fair amount of these. Um, a couple other ones, like the M9G8. Wonder if I would have swapped it a nine nub though and gave L O R four D six or R six D eight. 
letters and numbers, you know. I, is it is it just because um nine nine up is more versatile? Is that why? Yeah, because you can get like the lock focus off that pattern analyzer, and then you can give Lo some sort of rerolls because he doesn't have any of this list. Yeah, nine up is is a little bit more versatile, I think, than Lo is. I do like you know I do like the inclusion of Lo anyway, you know, right? So, um, I don't know. We'll see. I think it was a cool list. Um. JJ, what did Indar run for it? So for this one here, we got uh, Lulu Lampard with Predator Marksmanship and Shield Upgrade, BB-8 with ATP and Own Solo. Uh, Poe Dameron, uh, this one is with uh, Heroic Trick Shot, Chewbacca Crew, uh, Ray Gunner, all transponder codes, and the title. Um, that is, of course, the uh, Millennium Falcon Poe Dameron. Uh, Shaz Zazaro in the wide wing with Ion Cannon, Watchful Astromech, and Wartime Loadout, and then Elo Adzi with Marksmanship, Predator, BB Astromech, and the Foils to round off this list. Uh, definitely really, uh, really solid list. You got um, a lot of different initiatives, uh, definitely a lot of ships to help you spread out and contest objectives, but you still have enough to also control the board. Ludo, Elo, and Poe being the hammers in this list, being able to uh, do a lot of the offensive work um, with their with their stats and then uh bb8 and shaza uh, being able to contest reject this bb8 more than shaza but shaza can really help uh control where people are going with the iron cannon turret and um and since it's tanky with the wartime loadout you're gonna have a hard time uh really concentrating on shaza when you got the rest of the list that's going to be pummeling you so really solid list i like it alex we saved the best for last Oh yeah, four ship or or uh, rebel list with Without a falcon. Han? Where, no, where's a falcon with Bistan and perceptive, and nine up because it's Lando, <laughs> um, who I love, and it's got uh, also Hera with marksmanship, Magpulse, Keel with Prockets, and then Chopper with dorsal, Sagarera, and VTG. Uh, it actually looks just like a list I would run, <laughs> um, but. Lando, you can give out an action at I-5 if he does the blue maneuver. All of his banks are blue. His one through three straight is blue. You should get you should easily do blue maneuvers. It works well with Hera, because Hera can take like a an evade action with Lando or a focus action and roll up and lock for the Magpul, so you actually can do something with it. You can give it to Keo uh to do like a focus boost. Um or like a lock boost or whatever to line up that procket. Or you can give the chopper so you can get them uh, more mods. Uh, have a reinforce and then give it to them. Take a lock and then have saw for your double modded shot. I love Lando. He's versatile. Uh, whenever Han goes back up to eight and if Lando stays at seven, everyone's not going to have fun. No, I agree with you. I still think the... the uh... You know, the, the threat of the Han, unfortunately, is pretty there. But I think we've seen, like last week, it's demonstrated. Um, he's, demonst he's demonstrated that, or I'm sorry, he has. They have demonstrated we don't need Han in the list, specifically. So I think here, like, I like the Hera choice. Um, I'm not super sold on the Keo. I like concussion missiles better than Prockets. I just, I know how you feel. So this fits. This, that's why this is the Alex list um, versus well, it, the Chris it works list. Pretty well with Lando giving the actions at I five. That's the only time I'd put rockets on Keo. Fair enough, right? Yep. That's the only and, time I would recommend putting rockets on Keo. I will still run it. <laughs> so can I ask a question too for like an interaction purpose? Just because I don't run Lando. Mm -hmm. If you give the action to Keo, can you focus boost for yes. the stress? Yes. So like yes. you could technically take your evade. You could take a target lock. You could mm -hmm. do whatever you wanted. Because you could take your target lock and say, hey, if I, you know, if if, I, if there's nobody there, it doesn't matter. Or you could do the focus boost and then do like a barrel roll without, or well now if you're stressed, you can't do the action. Right, though. you could do like a focus and then have Lando pass you off like a roll boost. Or, um, you know, roll up with a, a focus and then have Lando give you the lock and then link that into a boost. Which is super good. Lando's a very good support team. And then with Hera shooting like a double modded mag pulse, you can actually like uh, use her more than like a, a swarm tactics carrier or something. 
she can mm-hmm. actually contribute to the list. Yeah. Yep. Or Orlando gets the boost and double focus. Orlando takes the evade and has a double focus. He's annoyingly yeah. tanky. Yeah. Yep. And I will say I don't like Lando with a evade and double focus. I hate it. It's it, it's horrible. I it is because like with the with the crazy the crazy thing with your uh, inability to um or your uh, inability to be an i6 right it doesn't matter because you have the fucking evade or the crappy evade right so you already have this evade i don't know like this uh, and i'm not the, for the prockets just personally but i know you are so you're talking about the evade on lando or the evade on q uh, on land yeah, I was gonna say the the evade on Lando is nice, you know, especially with the the Falcon title because as long as you have it, you basically get a free reroll um, with that with the the title. So um, it makes Lando slightly tankier than Han, I would say. Um, yeah, the more shots you take, though, the less the, the more yeah. Han is better. But yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, also with this stand, you can just roll with Lando, do like a three bank, take the double focus, and take a target lock on whoever you feel like shooting more. Yeah. So you get a better modded um, this stand shot. And then you pass the other lock with Hera after you use the first one. Now you have yep. two double modded this stand shots. Cough. That's pretty sick. That's good. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I just like the like the reinforce target lock chopper, you know, or if chopper bumps, you don't have to take an action. You don't have to take the red calculate. <laughs> Lando could just give him the reinforce. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Great. Mm-hmm. Never thought about that. No, and... Lando's super, super good. Yeah, it's like, you're done. <laughs> so, so could you take chopper out and put Ezra in here and would it be the same benefit? Uh, Well, I mean, for Ezra, right, you generally he's generally stressed, so he's not taking actions. He can't pass off the action if he's stressed. Gotcha. All right, so yep, it does not work as well then. Well, yeah, you can't do actions while stressed unless you contraband that turn and just give Ezra like three actions (laughs) if you include the Night Brother title. (laughs) Um, I don't know. I might... I'm not sure if like like Hera Chopper, like you do a lot with those 10 points uh, if you like want to split it. I don't know. I love Lando. (laughs) <laughs> well, let's move on. Talk to that. Yeah. All right. So we decided, so this will be the last one that we're going to cover tonight. And um, this one is the Berlin Open. They called it a star champ. I don't know if it was a star champ or if it was a world qualifier. I have no idea. But they had a very unique list that won the whole tournament by somebody named Han 248. And I'm going to skip JJ again, and I'm I am going to just give this back to Alex again because now I have Lando winning something <laughs> in a different freaking faction. So it's Alex, a different Lando. What like and what does this Lando do differently? So this is the other Falcon Lando, and not the garbage scum one. This is the Resistance one, which you almost never see because there's like three other pilots you would take before him. But ironically, not this Han carrier. Han guy. Um, so Lando, he has three reoccurring charges. After you fully execute a red maneuver or perform a red action, you may spend any number of charges to choose that many friendly ships at zero to two. And those chosen ships may perform an action even while stressed. It's real nasty to do like a red boost yourself and then get another action while also passing other actions off to other people. Um, you could even like chain it, uh, because they have C-3PO, uh, Ray Gunner, Contraband, and the title. You can chain it where you could do C-3PO, do the red coordinate, get a calculate token, spend one charge on yourself to do a red boost, because you can do that while st- stress anyways, right? Um, and then do another one because you just did a red action. So you can spend another charge on yourself, <laughs> I believe, because they are separate actions. So you can get like a coordinate, calculate, boost, and like a lock <laughs> um, if you want to blow through all your actions, which is super cool. Um, also, they have Elo with marksmanship, heroic, mag pulse, and munitions fail safe. 
you almost never see bag pulse on Nello. And that's generally because he only has one action. But with Lando, you can have that double modded and shoot before him because Lando's at a five. And you have Liga Fossung with uh, that's the Y Wing with wartime and diamond boron missiles, <laughs> which I love. Um, again, just using Lando to pass out more uh, actions and like. Um, like the Rebel Lando, just do it at I-5, take the focus, and then have Lando either coordinate you with C-3PO or use his own ability for the lock. <laughs> and you have Shaz Azaro uh, with Dorsal Wartime Plasmas. And then Chorus in the Y-Wing with Dorsal Wartime and Cluster Missiles. Uh, it's kind of silly. You could fit four ships with Lando. <laughs> and, and And three of them have nine health. Yep. You get, everybody's got this wartime loadout. Everybody has a dorsal. Almost everybody has a dorsal to it. So you, now you can target lock either which way. And and like, oh, we avoided getting shot with the, the missiles. Yeah, I'm just going to shoot you with a range one, you know, dorsal to it. Like, whatever, you know. Yeah, and what's nice, too, is especially with wartime loadout, you know, since it gives you the ability to prevent your opponent from canceling critical um, critical results, that boy, diamond boron missile all of a sudden becomes even more deadlier, right? Because you can almost guarantee now that the ability is going to hit, and that way you can cause the splash damage effect from it uh, to to work. Um, so you can uh, potentially like cause even further damage with that. Um, so I, I, I like that uh, that particular combo uh, with that, and especially with uh, with Lando being able to coordinate. I mean, you can boost into position or barrel run into position. To make sure you get that bullseye off, and that's going to be a, a really great shot if you can line it up perfectly, especially with some of the larger lists that we see uh, that have like medium bases, particularly in like Republic, that has all those Arc 170s that like to huddle together. Uh, that Diamond Boron missile can definitely push through some damage. You can roll up with like a Y Wing, right? And then just boost, and then Lando can coordinate you a focus and then use the ability for you to get a lock. Like, you don't even have to roll up with any tokens and still get a double modded shot off. Which is awesome. I've been looking for a land. Like, I've tried to put some effort into making Lando um, a thing in Resistance. And I might try, I might swap out one of the Y Wings for like Merle. But uh, yeah, Mer Merle feels like a good fit. Again, though, this does feel like a objective tanky piece here, right? Yeah. I mean, that that's really what this feels like is a very tanky objective, you know. If I've got, like, Merle and, like, I can swap one of the Y-Wings, too, for, like, Eager. Or, like, Snap and then downgrade one to BB-8 and bring Merle. And just run my list that I normally run, but Lando instead of Ray, you know. <laughs> But it's cool. It's a cool list. I'm glad that actually won something. Um, have fun trying to build around Lando, though. It's, it's weird, but it's cool. <laughs> it is, yeah. It is weird, yeah. All right, JJ, which one of the top three in one list do you want to take? I'll take the first one here. So we got uh, another Rebel list here. We got the uh, standard loadout. The, uh, sorry, the standard build on with a uh, trick shot. For, uh, actually, not not so uh, common, but trick shot. Perceptive co-pilot Bastan in Millennium Falcon title, uh, boy Luke. Uh, we got Corn Horn in the X-Wing, uh, the T-65, with marksmanship, percussion missiles, R3 Astromech, and the foils. And then Jake Farrell making a comeback here with marksmanship, elusive, cluster missiles, and electronic baffle to round off that list. Uh, uh, Jake Farrell's definitely one of those pieces that's been left behind in Rebels, and he is just so, so good as a support ship. Uh, not only to provide himself with the focus, but his uh, his other friendlies that uh, that are in range. Uh, Jake Farrell can absolutely help double mod a lot of these ships there. Um, even just buffing Han uh, ahead of time. You know, if you get that boost within Han, he already has his double focus, and then he can just boost into position to get a trick shot off. I think this actually probably enables Han to be more aggressive with that trick shot because you're absolutely focusing more on positioning. And if you can get that uh, that focus early with Han, you can get pretty much you know four die shots cons uh, consistently with that Han. Yeah. 
<clears throat> still don't agree. But I do agree with you, though, in the aspect. I do agree with you in the aspect of Jake. Yes. Like, I do think um, I do think it does do some enabling. I didn't know this was an extended tournament because here's Cornhorn right there. Right. You know, like I was like, oh, that's, that's, that's kind of cool. Cornhorn. Huh? That's X-Wing Cornhorn. Oh, OK. Yes, well, I feel better then. All right. I was like, I was like, wow, Cornhorn. Like, holy crap. Yeah, I should have seen the S foils. Sorry. It's it's a. It's been a long weekend oh, for this so used guy. to him in the E-Wing, you know? <laughs> yep. I don't know. I, I don't... I guess I don't hate this list. I do agree. I think this list has a higher threshold of um, skill set to play this list, though. Like, I definitely... Th- I mean, because you got to keep Jake and Han together if, if, if that's your combo, right? Or Jake and somebody together. So, there's... there There is a little bit of skill set, I think, that goes into this more... More so than just putting Luke, Sabine, Wedge, um, Han, and whoever else is in that stupid list. Keo. Keo, yeah. And, uh, on the table. I think this one has a little bit higher um, play, playthrough. So. Uh, the next list that we have is a, another Rebel list that I thought, actually, I like. I kind of like this list. Um you got Fen with Beskar, Mando, Marksmanship, Predator, Bodica, Beskar, Mando, and Predator, Para with Marksmanship, Magpults, Warheads, um, obviously there to strip stuff for the other team. Then you have Saw with Pivot Wing, Contraband, Notorious, Magva, and Tactical Officer, and then Sabine with Lone Wolf, um, which I don't know if you want. I don't know. I, I, that's a hard call, in my opinion, on which way you would go with that, uh, especially because you you don't have the Han big base anymore, but you do have the Han, or you do have the medium base, right, with Saw. Um, but, I mean, Sabine's a really good objective getter in that list. Like, you have enough firepower with the other four ships. You do not have to worry about Sabine doing anything but evading, boosting, evading, barrel roll, evading, you know, whatever you want, taking that action. Um and the lone wolf does allow you to be a little bit more action oriented. Um, though I don't know. Do you pick up crates? Does anybody pick up crates with Sabine? Does anybody like you unless can. nobody's around? Yeah, I think I think you can pick up a crate with Sabine. Uh, I mean, your your opponent has to go in and dedicate uh, ships to try to take her out, and she's only worth two points. You know, if she picks up a crate a crate for for two turns. Um, and anything else is pretty basically bonus points because she's already made up her points at two turns, and your your opponent has to actively try to hunt her down. You know, her three agility with the in the bait and lone wolf is going to be pretty hard to shoot down. Speed. Yeah, I don't think it's like ideal, but like there's like, nothing wrong with it. You just cover normal tie okay. fighter. Yeah, yeah. Tr- that's true. That's true. So a tie fighter with a five straight that can run away. So. All right, Alex. What is the last? And this is going to be the last one. And then we're going to move on to another segment. What is the? What is the last list that we have with another Dace Bone Arm, but concussion bombs this time? So yep, that that's on there. <laughs> so this is a scum list, <clears throat> and it has Han Solo for six points. With trick shot, cluster missiles, Mandalorian, the child, veteran turret gunner, and Lando's title. Dace bone arm with Mark Sable, Gleb, concussion bombs, delayed fuses, and the title. Then you have Dirge with cutthroat marksmanship proton cannons over tune modulators. Uh, that cutthroat can only do over to modulators. People have to realize proton cannons is a reoccurring charge and you can't recover it with cutthroat. Um, you got Arlies with dorsal cluster missiles, ion bombs, and then Lima with mag pulse and concussion bombs. Um, don't, don't fly a wings around these things. They'll just die. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Very quickly. Or Very BAs. quickly. Yeah. <laughs> just the concussion bombs dealing a damage under the shields. Uh, that is a scum list that someone brought. <laughs> I mean, he he made top ten. I don't know. That's that seems pretty good, Alex. I'm yeah. No, I just uh, it wasn't a small event either. I think that's more of a sign of the player than it is the list. 
honestly. But um, I mean, I don't know what <laughs> uh, uh, cluster missiles on on Han Solo instead of engine upgrade. You know, veteran turret gunner is also a choice. <laughs> and see, to me, I would drop the veteran turret gunner, I guess, for an engine upgrade right there. Like to me, that seems like a simple straight swap. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I get, I get that it allows you to double tap. That's what it's trying to do. Is I, he's gonna put it side to side and fly, never changing his um or their uh arc, right? I, I guess but you have to double tap on the other side. Like you have to, it's not out the same one you shot before. So they might. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, with this Han, the only thing, I mean, if and that's if they really, really wanted to, um, like, take advantage of it, I think placing it front and back, um, probably not ideal, but, you know, you, you bump somebody in the front as you're trying to get out, and there's also somebody in the back, that's the most likely scenario. Other than that, if you put it side to side, you would have to essentially make sure that during the turn zero, you place your objectives in a way where you have a like an angled lane to go right through the middle of the board and hope that you get through and maybe take a, a pot shot. But even then you're maybe at best getting the veteran turret gunner off twice. Um, but uh, yeah. I hope they're not like shooting cluster missiles and trying to shoot someone with veteran. I, I, I don't. That, that doesn't work. It, nope. It doesn't work. Only. I don't think it, I don't think they're doing that. So we're just, man. We're nope. We're gonna say we're pretty sure they are not doing that. I hope so. I'm gonna I'm gonna give the benefit of the doubt here to that. So, um, I don't know. It's that's that's a list. I it's I I how about this? I I'm interested in scum list building to some extent, only because we're either gonna go one or two ways, right? Is gonna just continue to be shitty and bad, or we're gonna have all this basis so that when points change we might get something where we get some cool stuff kind of filtering and I'm not giving up on scum building. And I'm like, I'm determined to downsize like my life. And like scum <laughs> is one of the, one of the things I really am having a hard time wanting to part with and sell, even though like for the last year, it kind of feels like we're just being given the middle finger. Right. Um, that's what that feels like to me, but I really do genuinely want to make, make it work so all right so we got through quite a few lists i thought that was pretty good um the next thing we want to do is we want to do our academy 101 segment where we review this week we're going to be reviewing meta staples along with their components to explain how you can deconstruct the list or if you'd rather copy the list how you can play it this week we are going to be covering empire because empire list building seems to be so prominent and maybe we're going to get a list without vader probably not but you don't know until you see we'll be we're going to bring our academy 101 segment to you right now for our academy 101 segment like I said, we want to cover meta lists, right? As you're preparing to go to a tournament, if you're going to prepare to go to store champs, there's two things that can happen, right? You're going to see meta lists because people want to win, right? People do want to win. It is a thing. Some people like the meta play. Um, Yes, Vader crew 100% counts as a Vader in the list, just so you know, Sebwa. So that's why I made that joke. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> people do want to play meta lists and people want to win. And so you're gonna, these are things you're going to see. And so what we thought we'd do is we would start tackling each of the different factions each week to kind of say, hey, what's out there that you could be confronted with that you have to either be able to beat or you have to be able to play to win? So between Alex and JJ, they've come up with a few lists that have kind of become meta staples in some way, shape, or form. Um, all of them have Vader in it. Uh, surprise, surprise. Uh, this is an FYI. Um, and so what we wanted to do is we we're going to talk a little bit about each of the different lists. We're going to talk about how to set some of this stuff up, how to play the list and how to burn the list down and kind of what counters it. So Alex, you want to kick us off tonight with the very first empire list. 
yes. So this is a, I believe the highest count you'll see at a tournament is this general archetype. Uh, some of the pieces move around, but it's Vader, three bombers, and a TIE Reaper. Uh, and this one we're giving you, it is Vader, starter pack Vader, pay to win Vader. Uh, you know, very versatile. This is starter, or that's the SL Tomax, the one that comes with the bombers pack. Um, who can operate on his own, mostly, with that true grit. Uh, but also, you know, if you have plasma tarps, you don't want to spend that locks. Captain Jonas is still there. Uh, Jonas with Sat Salvo, Barrage Rockets, Bombal Generator, and then Major Rhymer with Barrage Rockets, Saturation Salvo, and some sort of bomb, uh, mostly Ion. He has seen Seismics with Delayed. And then that one list, we saw Concussion Bombs. And then you have Vizier with Palpatine. That's pretty much set. Um, you can do like Faroff occasionally, but mostly you see Palpatine just because he helps out. Uh, the defense of the bombers allows him to still keep the focus tokens for the Barrage Rockets. And this list hits super hard. <laughs> this list hits insanely hard unless you fly it wrong. But this list will this list will take. Uh, Zam down to zero health in one turn if you're not careful. Yeah, absolutely. Even with a reinforced token. Not saying I've ever had that happen to me, right? <laughs> yeah, and some of the, the more aggressive builds or versions of this is the uh, Battle of the Gavin Vader, uh, which allows them to spend a force to convert a blank into a hit. Um, that one, I think, is even more deadly on the offensive piece for it. Um, if you're going for more aggression for kills, uh, mainly because that Vader is very, very consistent at uh, getting three hits, if not crits, in uh, in to to start off the the attacks, um, and then the bombers pour into you with their with their ordnance. Uh, some of the other versions that we've seen of this, of course, is the customized Tomax Brand with the barrage rockets and saturation salvo, which is another form of terror because uh, that uh, saturation salvo, you know, sometimes it can really, really uh, turn your natties into saddies and can really mess you up uh, for follow up attacks on here. Being able to have uh, Palpatine uh, to provide that passive mod to any one of these ships is a big plus, and this list just absolutely wants to go in and wreck it. Um, now, as far as playing this list here, um, the positioning is absolutely critical for this particular list here. Um, if, when you're setting this list up, you want to have a lane for your type bombers to be able to relatively huddle uh, together to uh, be able to have the same time on target on the same target when they want to. And then you can have Vizier and Vader on opposite ends or uh, at least in the general vicinity if they need to. Uh, for Vizier, at least, be able to coordinate uh, when he does the ailerons boost. Um, if not, he can go out and just claim objectives and be super fast if he needs to. Uh, or be that jamming piece in the list to help uh, set up the saturation salvos or the Vader uh, like locks to uh, mess up the, their intended target for it here. Uh, these This list can absolutely joust the best list than the other uh, factions there uh, mm -hmm. because they can't hit very hard. Um, what do you guys think about setup? For me, the so okay. <laughs> so I ha I I personally I feel it depends on how what objective objectives you're playing, right? So like in my world, the bigger thing is is you have to kind of keep those bombers closer together, but I don't feel Vizier, especially with Vizier's title, like with Empire Palpatine, has to stay next to them. I think you can joust and do your things if that's what you want to do. But the way I run this is, or I would run this is I would keep my bombers kind of in a tighter cluster and I would have Vizier on one side and Vader on the other side. And then that way I have kind of a pincer move with the two Vizier can move extremely fast. And then the bombers can be versatile to which side of the board you have all of the firepower in. So in my, in my theory, you leave Vizier and Vader kind of on separate sides because Vizier is able to do the um, coordinate if, if needs to be, if you're close enough. But in reality, it's that palp force that you're using Vizier for, right? Like Vizier is not your hammer. And if you joust with Vizier, He's you better make sure that they all stay in that block and they all stay in front. 
And I run the way I run Vizier is not that way. I am KG with my Vizier, hence why I don't usually run Palpatine. I'm more of the Seven Sister, uh, you know, Captain Hark like build. But I will say Pelp is a million times easier to run because you know what the best part is? You just flip the damn force and say, yep, uh, I just, uh, I, I focus, you know, somebody's evade right there. Boom, gone. Oh, Vader, you don't want to spend a force this turn? Here you go. Merry Christmas. And it works against Padme. And it works against Padme. A absolutely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I would set mine up. Yeah, uh, generally in this list, uh, Vizier would be doing a lot of the objectives. Uh, so you kind of want to set it up by like an assault thing. You do count as two uh, ships because you are medium. Uh, the Reapers, despite having one agility, really awesome um, crate carriers. Just because that um, pre-movement boost is not a boost action. So you can still do it while carrying a crate. And um, I agree, Tanner, mostly with like how you'd set it up. You want to keep the, the three bombers by each other. Although with Tomax, with like the, the SL Tomax, you don't have to keep him around, uh, which is kind of cool. You can have him with Vader and try to operate and do like a flanking maneuver with that. But if you're running like Barrage Rocket Tomax, uh, you, you do want to keep all three of them by each other just so you can maximize the, the offensive output with Jonas. And then Vader just does Vader things, right? Like just <laughs> Vader you, does whatever you want. Vader grab the scramble. I mean, if you're doing scramble, you want Vader to try to get whatever ones he can because he can do uh, spend a force get in action after that um yeah i mean generally it's just the bombers you point at their list you focus and you one straight until they're dead works really good against everything but like bray so let's talk about counters uh, for this particular list if you're facing off against it. Um, do you guys have a particular strategy for what you would attack first in this particular list? Well, it's nice that they don't have shields. <laughs> yes. Um, and you just got to focus fire the bombers down because they will burn super fast. If you have a, like a higher initiative, you can like take down Jonas or Reimer pretty easily before because they are like trying to keep like you have to make them spend their focus tokens. Um, generally, like you, they try to not let you do that. You know, keeping range three as much as they can. But uh, for this kind of list, you have very little lists that can out joust it. Um, but actually, low agility doesn't mind this too much. Like the arcs in Republic, they're tanky enough. I mean, it sucks, like, getting your dice re-rolled, but you can still, like, born for this if you have to roll into a focus. Uh, but they're generally tanky enough and hit hard enough with enough accuracy that you can take down some of the bombers, uh, which I like. And for, like, a counter against, uh, like, a turn zero kind of thing, you want to see if you can put uh, the asteroids away that if they are trying to go for objectives... It's, it's difficult for them to be like side by side, right? In like a normal kind of formation you would typically see like in the old tie swarm kind of formations. You want to try to put rocks there to break up that formation in any way you can. Yeah, I agree. For me, if I was going against this list, I think control list is a very, very good way to counter this list. Anything that can do uh, jams, like with like Magpul's warheads, for instance, or jam actions, um, anything that can do ions that uh, help control where they can move. And being in range one uh, is probably the best way to really counter these lists. The only exception being, of course, Rhymer that can uh, shoot those barrage rockets at range one. But the reason why you want to be at range one versus two or three versus these bombers is just because they can shoot that ordinance um, only at that range and being at range one even though yes it's still going to be a three die shot not having access to that saturation salvo um, mm. is huge for your ships to survive that being said if you're also going on the offensive and they have to spend that focus to um, to survive to make sure that they actually do get a shot um, having 
basically neutering their offense is a big, big deal uh, to to really help uh, nullify this. Um, crit generation is also another big deal. You know, these ships do not have shields at all. These bombers can melt pretty fast, especially with a very good crit chain with like, you know, a few leak into a direct hit. Uh, these bombers can die extremely fast. Um, you do have to deal with that Reaper being able to counter jam you um, in that instance. So you do have to make sure that, you know, turn one uh, to set yourself up to prevent the, that early jam from Vizier if he does come in. Uh, being able to take target locks onto obstacles early on just to make sure that, you know, you don't lose your own focus when you're trying to get into the fray uh, definitely helps out there. And once you take out those bombers, it's going to be you versus Vader. Vader will definitely hurt. Um, well, he can definitely punch a lot of damage through, but if you're able to um, have a ship that can reposition to block Vader consistently, it's going to be tough for Vader to stay into the stay in the action, especially when it comes to like the night fights when you're in close range. If Vader doesn't have that lock, he's only going to be shooting two, maybe three dice at range one against you. And yes, he does have the force, but it's going to hurt a lot less than having a double modded. Uh, target lock shot from Vader uh, going into you. So even if you're not going to kill Vader, just denying him his actions to uh, take that target lock is pretty huge. Yeah, and honestly, if you're like if your meta, like your local meta, is just overrun with something like this, the um, the four ship Han Fen list is actually really good against this. Yeah, um, Fen being in range one is not what the bombers want to see. Um, and that auto evade really blunts like their their offense, and then Han is just like you. You're rolling one die against me. Are you going to spend a charge to sass salvo it when I can reroll it again? Like it's, <laughs> yeah. it's real rough. And then he does enough damage with uh, two shots that you should be able to chip away at the uh, bombers with Han. Yeah. Probably push push a damage or two each each turn on on one or two bombers. All right. Anything for objectives, or should we just kind of move on to the next? I just move on to the next one. I mean, like the objectives is be by you know the place with the salt, hit the button with Vader, give Vizier the crate, yeah, maybe and maybe then, a bomber or two, depending on the situation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the bombers they're mainly going to be. I think the strongest objective for this list is assault, um, because you're able, especially if you're able to. Um, if you're the player playing this list, you're able to put objectives together in a close proximity where the bombers can uh, stay together and contest these objectives from their bubble. Um, it's going to be very hard to um, for your opponent to win that battle at the at that objective site there. Uh, scramble also kind of a little bit difficult that Vizier is deceptively large and can uh, go and claim and block and uh, Vader with his action able to uh, use his first action to claim and then spend force to take a focus uh, lock uh, can be really, really effective. Um, and they um, they can definitely do very well in Scramble. Salvage, you know, you got uh, the bombers. They don't really care to, you know, um, lose their barrel roll in general, um, with the exception of Tomax with the, um, the standard loadout version. But they can each carry crates, you know, they can have Vizier who can carry a crate. Um, Vader, if he's out of afterburner charges, probably going to carry a crate. Um, but they're they're probably not going to give up their reposition to, to do that. Um, but I think that's probably their weakest scenario. And then chance engagement is all about the offense, you know, to go kill your enemy. And this list is very, very good at doing that. So, yeah. Yeah, you have health two of those bombers only one point. <laughs> yeah, feels exactly. Bad, so. Exactly, yeah. It is horrible, I will tell you from <laughs> personal experience. <laughs> All right, let's move on. It'll look, more bombers. More bombers. <laughs> oh, we got some ties. What is this? Vader and his black ties? Is that what we call it? Black yeah. tie Vader? Can I call Very it black, black tie, tie Vader? Vader. Like, yeah. <laughs> so this one is a little more objective focused on this one here. Um, this one is very similar to the previous list. We got Vader with two tie bombers. I'm sorry, three tie bombers. And instead of Vizier, we got the Black Squadron Aces in here. Uh, this one is 
a lot more objective focus for the fact that you have those two bodies and those two black squadron aces that can go in and claim objectives and be those blockers um, to also help set up shots for those tie bombers there. Um, typically, they can run a lot faster and go ahead to um, like get in the way of your, your opponent's list um, and really help gum up lanes, uh, particularly effective against medium bases. So uh, when you're facing off against like R-170s or um or you're facing off against like han for instance if you can get into his face uh to prevent him from going where he needs to go you can possibly mess up where his arc is going to be so that can potentially take away a shot from your enemy um it can prevent them from claiming objectives on their own and generally these ties are a nuisance and if they are able to at least prevent your opponent from claiming an objective for two turns they've already earned their worth in points um definitely uh it takes a little more skill to to fly this to ensure that you're uh, not just giving up, you know, free four points to your opponents because you know the ties can die very quickly, especially with the blank out. But um, if flown uh, correctly, you can absolutely get a ton of points from those black squadron aces and um, and win the objective race against your opponent. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know. It, it really, I guess, kind of depends on your play style. If you want a Reaper with Palp support, or if you just want to run two Tie Fighters, and they both are pretty successful. I think the list plays a little bit differently, really, right? Like, I think the difference with this list is your Tie Fighters are doing different objective pieces that Vizier's not, and they live a little bit longer usually, like usually, <laughs> but they don't put out the damage. So in this list, you are looking to 100% hold people, which means you probably got to use Vader's Ion Missiles once in a while. You're, you're probably going to have to. At least every other game, maybe every three games, don't know 100%. Um, but you definitely are going to have to use some Ion Missiles. And I won't lie and say that I've actually played against some people that play Vader and they love to ionize. They try to ionize my Cad Bane or my Dirge. And it's like, oh, yeah, okay, thanks. well, I'm just going to... I'm just going to bank and take my focus anyway. I don't usually get a target lock ever. And, you know, once once I'm done with it, then, you know, what I get to do is, oh, with Cat, if I kill somebody, I'm just going to take a target lock then. But, hey, no problem. But um, anyway, so. <laughs> anyway, that's a CIS problem. Usually people don't have to deal with that. So um, so I, I think this list flies a little bit differently. Um, Setup-wise, Alex, do you set this list up similar with the three bombers, are you going to be a little bit more spread out? How you, how you doing? So in this particular list, this has death fire, but death fire can usually just be rhymer. Um, you know, they both functionally play the same. Um, I mean, they, they don't, they don't play the same at all, but like it, it, it they're the like, same thing. Yes. <laughs> uh, you do different things with death fire than you do. You're not straight jousting. If you have death fire set up is different. If you're not having death fire, you would still run them in like that. Uh, like triangle kind of formation uh, around Jonas to use his ability. If you have like Deathfire, like in this particular list, Tomax and Deathfire are completely independent. You don't have to put them near Jonas at all. Jonas' ability works on himself, so you can actually spread out uh, if you want. Can we sing so. the? Uh... Oh, right. Never mind. I don't want to. I don't want to get nailed with the, the the My Name Is Jonas song oh. by Weezer. <laughs> I, every time you say Jonas, I just keep thinking about this. Sorry, I'm derailing. Keep it on going. Ignore me. Ah, uh, but yes, like if you're running the particular one we have up here, you do not need to keep your bombers around. There's actually a fair amount of ion control in this list too, which is awesome. Uh, those you probably can just run, you know, Tomax next to Vader. You can still joust with all this list. It, it really depends if you're bringing three barrage rocket bombers or like two barrage rocket bombers and SL Tomax. Keep them near each other. If you're not, you can spread out and get some objectives. It's basically down to that. I don't think there's a, a particular formation that you would use in this. I mean, you keep the, yeah, no. the. I assume you keep the Tie Fighters next to each other too. You can. I mean, I think I think this list is a little more versatile in play style. How about that? I don't think it hits as hard, so you have to be very. This is like an objective style list. I do, no, I, I do, okay, I do like Deathfire a lot, 
but I don't know if it's better than Rhymer, right? In this in this specific list. But Deathfire is making a comeback. And I won't lie and say it's kind of fun every other turn for two turns to be able to, you know, do your maneuver and then drop or throw your 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 bombs. And I won't lie and say I've been caught more than one time by them. So um five K and do the three bank bomb drop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. You are, you are seeing Deathfire like there's an up, a noticeable uptick in Deathfire coming in, especially with the release of SL Tomax where he's more independent. Uh, you could do just like Deathfire and Tomax and you can cut out Jonas and put in something else. Uh, you, you're seeing that a little bit more as people experiment with it. I mean, could you could you put Rhymer in for Jonas, right? And put Rhymer with the Sriracha, the, the Sriracha Salvo? And um, <laughs> and then take one of those black squadron and move it to Lorir, right? Like, like that yes. feels like a pretty good list too. Now you got one crappy objective monkey and one good objective monkey that can also put out damage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you see um, or uh, like Lorir sprinkled in there occasionally, especially if you don't have you're not bringing a lot of bombers. Fair enough. Objectives. So, so I think I think we talked about objectives, and I think like in chance, you're keeping things a little bit closer together, creating kill boxes. <coughs> I'm per personally, I'm flanking with Tomax and Vader. I'm definitely keeping Tomax a little bit farther away to ensure I try to get that plasma off um, without dying, <laughs> um, because it is too agility. You can die. I mean, you you can die from it. And Deathfire is ramming into the to, to wherever your your ships are. That's what Deathfire is doing. You know, like let me ram into you, throw some proton bombs, then I'm gonna drop a or you know my counter nets on somebody to run through. And um, God, you know what'd be great if you could run counter nets to like flip sideways. Like you could like have an upgrade that would allow you to have a counter net sideways. I want oh, that. That's gross. That's gross. You can do that if you're Soul Sixa and just use the hard turn or Emon. Ooh, JJ, we got something to think about. I like it. Um, and that's why we got uh, packs coming up, man. We could definitely do that. Uh, uh, anyway, so, you know, and then I think if you look at, you know, Assault, you can spread out a little bit. You don't have to keep the two TIE Fighters together. You can let them, one of them hang out by the solo objective that you get to place in your area and just let them one heart around the damn board and collect your objective. Um I don't know. Any other thoughts on, on, on objectives that are a little bit different uh, than, than what we had the list before? Yeah, no, I don't think they do anything like specifically super special with any of the objectives. I don't think it's not like uh, anything they, crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think they're, they're fair across the board. I think they're actually more stronger in Salvage, uh, this version of it, right? Because you got two bodies now that I can dedicate... Uh, and then four bodies that can go in and contest, uh, like the other carriers. Um, I think this actually probably doesn't have the best thing power when it comes to assault. Um, cause again, these are tie fighters and they can die fairly easily. Um, and they're very susceptible to crits as well. Um, so I think they're a little more weaker than the other list. Um, and not having that big medium base to contest multiple objectives, it does hurt. Um, but still it's a very solid list. It's a, it's a, it does well, pretty much well all, all around. So yeah. All right. The last empire list is a double decimator list um in here and we have seen a little bit of return of the double decimators we thought it would be a little silly if we did um a decimator list with um more bombers and more bsas yeah <laughs> yeah now for one thing that doesn't have like i was gonna say excessively bombers but it also just still has double bombers <laughs> it, it does but but it, the problem is, is if you get rid of um Captain Oinkin, Oinkin, like you get rid of the, the the piggy here. He um, you you have the seven points. You're gonna just put more bombers. In. Yeah. That's what you're gonna do. So so like like the idea was is is this is not 100% meta. This is not something that like hit 100% of the top of the uh, of the pattern analyzer or whatever. Uh, it's pattern analyzer yeah. is the name of the the app, right? Yes, that we were using, but. 
these are all very prominent pieces that have gone together and we have seen this we just haven't seen this as much because people like to run that whole vader bomber thing by themselves yeah um occasionally you'll see um like double decimators do well uh in, in michigan we're huge we were like a really big decimator state i don't know why we were always flying like uh 1.0 we'd fly like rack vader or uh rack soon tier rack hilo uh so i'm just used to like playing against decimators <laughs> so they're not terribly intimidating they do die eventually uh but the problem is if there's only one scenario now that you know gets half points you have to fully commit to actually killing these decimators and that's like the obstacle you face with this list yeah all right jj break the list down for us what's what's going on with the list here so we're going to start off with rear admiral shernu uh he comes equipped with ruthless star vader uh death troopers agile gunner tactical scrambler and dauntless um a variation of this just sacrifices tactical scrambler and ruthless for like a seismic bomb uh, Captain Waken uh, with Ruthless, Seven Sister, Agile Gunner, Triple Zero, and Seismic Charges. Um, the other variation of this, of course, would be uh, with Morden Key as well. Um, kind of similar to the loadout there. Uh, Major Reimer uh, set Salvo Barrage Rocket Seismics, and Till Next Burn would set Salvo Barrage Rockets there. Um, typically, what you're seeing from these is the Decimators do tend to deal quite a bit of damage there, and they're absolutely action denial machines. Um, the Death Troopers definitely becoming probably the more the most prominent upgrade uh, for ships that can carry it, uh, which is these Decimators there. Uh, just being able to prevent you from being able to shed that stress and then punishing you for uh, for having it, uh, it can be very very devastating for these uh, these these ships uh being able to use their reinforce ability as well uh to mitigate or make it tougher for you to kill these ships outright uh can be uh really tough uh because you're you're trying to spend all your efforts into taking down these ships and they're worth seven points but at the same time having that reinforce available just makes it hard for you to kill and they are going to just hit you back even harder and just having uh the passive mod for a rack being able to turn that uh focus into a crit with his ability um is just absolutely devastating at that i5 there um and they're able to ruthless their other ships um if they need to you know especially with a uh, rack and like oiken uh, if he needs to take away one hull out of the 16 that they have they that's no problem and they can um have very hyper accurate shots for them to to take out ships yeah and i also think with this 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 list archetype this is a little bit there this is a little bit takes a little bit of practice to play because you are flying two large bases they don't have stops right so you ain't stopping with these things no matter what you want to do you, they don't stop. Um, so, and I think hence why JJ has Agile Gun around here, right? Because it allows you to kind of do whatever the hell you want. And then at the end of the turn, you just do what you need to do to, to make sure that next next turn you get a shot. So if you know you're getting blocked, you can just rotate your damn arc then and be done with it. <laughs> like, like, whatever. Yeah. You don't even got to worry about Dauntless. Um, yeah. And Dauntless pretty much guarantees that uh, that reinforce for, for Rack all, every time, every turn. Now, you know what the funny thing is, too, though, JJ, with this list, right? Um, you know what the funny thing with this list is? Is you can ruthless each of the decimators if that's what you want to mm -hmm. do. Yep. Right? Now, I would actually, I will be honest with you, I would argue for, and, and this is going to go a shout out to Brendan because this is what Brendan's been running, but I would argue that Tactical Scrambler could be interjected with electronic baffle. Yeah. Yeah. And I would argue that size mix on Oinkin could also you could put electronic baffle and I don't know, marksmanship, I guess. I don't know what else you would do with the other point um off the top of my head. But I've seen people also bring in Minister Tua crew as well, um, to also guarantee that uh, that reinforce as well. Um it's just not as um, not as good once you start getting to being uh, stressed all the time, and that pretty much turns off that ability, but that is definitely a, a viable option as well. Yeah, 
And the other option is, and I don't know, like, does Morna have the same loadout value? But Morna is another very popular decimator people like to run. Um, yeah. Like, I think Oiken has its purpose um, because you can run into people and get really damn good shots. Um, but Morna also has the reinforce to become more tank, more tanky here. Yeah, in um, Morna rack lists, uh, you'll see actually the Dauntless on Morna and Tua on rack. Yeah. So that way, you know, because uh, you're you're not Oigan, you don't you actually care about uh, the range zero stuff there. Um, also, it's it's nice with the the standard loadouts of the bombers. You can now replace like Tomax and Rhymer if you like with uh, like Deathfire and standard loadout Tomax uh, that operate a little bit more independently. I mean, these also operate independently, but. Uh, you know, that depends on how, how you want to swap out the bombers or not. Yeah. So I will say, Mer to, to take this list, because this list has so much health, you cannot focus on two decimators. You have to pick who you're going to kill here. Like, it is not possible, in my opinion, it is not possible to shoot through 24 health very easily. You could do it, but it is not very easily. I will tell you what does like to do it. Anything that gets a bullseye... And doesn't let you have reinforce. That yeah, something with it. proton cannons, yeah, maybe. It, it just, those things do, but <laughs> you know, anything else. I mean, you know, the same. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I keep throwing CIS in here, even though we haven't even hit CIS yet. But um, <laughs> uh, so obviously, anything that throws crits into these things, anything that can jam them, is great counterattack. You, if you can jam through. I, I don't care what you if you have Dauntless, but like, whatever, man. Like, um, if you can jam it, but like to me in this list, I think the bigger threat here is is Rack. I think Rack is the the larger threat, and like if if you're gonna pick one to focus fire on, that's that's how I would do that. So, anybody else have any thoughts on 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 counters to the list per se? Um, bombs, yeah. I guess. But that's yeah. obvious. Oh, people are bombs, just bad against bombs in general. Yeah, yeah bombs and and crit mechanics definitely like definitely mess up this this list here. Um, one of the things that we covered earlier in the show was you know having that dead eye shot. Um, I can tell you that I've played against this list a few times with uh, with Merrick with dead eye shot and marksmanship, and I've been able to flip uh, flip over panic pilots, being able to flip over. Uh, damage sensor race, which absolutely shuts off uh, the reinforce for rack, and then it's just it's just a, a crit fest from there. Um, being able to um, to take away those actions is very very key, right? Because typically rack is going to spend the force uh, with Vader to do damage against you, and you can't be afraid of it if you're going to uh, dedicate yourself to take down rack. You have to make sure that you go all in, and you have to set yourself up to make sure that when you go in and have those um, those attacks close in that they're you're gonna make them count right you're gonna set yourself up for range three engagement first make sure they can get through those shields and then have your dedicated blocker to uh, or dedicated jammer to go in there and take out that reinforce so that way those follow-up range two or range one shots into rack just chew through that hole and if you can get in crits uh, you're going to absolutely have a, a very good shot in taking out this decimator here um i can tell you from personal experience you can take out rack within two rounds of shooting um if you have dedicated fire into this list um or what list this, are you flying <laughs> what, what uh, list my, are you my are vader, you my vader oh. list yeah. oh, okay okay all right all right, all right. I'm, I'm just <laughs> but i've done I'm a little it, curious I've done it here. With resistance and i've done it with with republic as well um but yeah yeah you can you can absolutely burn down a decimator if you have concentrated fire on it but beware, you will leave yourself open for the rest of the list to come in and take down your ships as well. So you got to be able to gauge it that that trade is worth it. So. Yeah, a big weakness of like decimators in general is if your ships are very um, agile, like that they can reposition really well. Uh, you can get around um, which side you're uh, reinforcing or uh, bisect them. You know, generally, if you're like your larger base, you can. Uh, still be in the rear 
um, half as well in their front half pretty easily. So if you have like an I-6 large base boosting ship, uh, it's pretty good against something like that. Or uh, you know, anything with like a, a, a roll when you get close to these things. You got to be real, really careful with that troopers though. Um, not to get too close, but if you have very um, ships that are repositioned very well, you can get around the reinforce, and then that's just a really sad decimator. Yeah. Yeah. So objective-wise, I, I think this is – we don't have to talk about Assault. That's that's an easy one. Um, assault, this one probably works very well with. Um, if you want to fight them on Assault, you have to spread those bloody objectives out as far as possible. Um, but, like, boxes. Who picks up the box here? Is it is it the decimators? It seems silly to do that, but who else is picking up a box here? I mean, you don't really reposition too much with the bombers, but this is not a good um, uh, salvo list. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean Rack's good because he generates crits, but that's about it. Yeah, I mean, you, you can honestly pick up the box with any one of these these ships and just you know make, just hope that you hang on to it. Honestly, it's not ideal because. You don't want to give up the action um, for these ships because you want to make sure that they can always uh, have a reinforce. Um, so it, it's a little tough. I think salvage is definitely the weakest for this list. And, you know, we've, we've had other versions of this list where they just, um, like, put in, uh, like, three Black Squadron ties, and they become the objective monkeys for that and also become ruthless fodder for the decimators. Um, but in this particular list, you're you're focusing on killing the the enemy and um, and knock out the crates that way. All right, fair enough. Anything else uh, before we close out of this segment? All right, I'll take silence as <laughs> no, agreement. Everything's fine. Um. So that is the conclusion of our Empire Meta List analysis. If you missed it or want to go back, we have done a Rebel one already as well. And we are going to be doing a Resistance, FO, Republic, CIS, and Meta Scum. Um, I don't know we'll how we're going to do that, but we're going to try it. That'll be the literal last faction we deal with. But we are covering all of the Meta factions in an effort to try to help you be able to prepare <coughs> for your upcoming tournaments here in the future. In the future, we will also have a Academy 101 specific section in the playlist where you can go after just these specific topics that we're talking about. All right. With that being said, thank you all for joining us tonight for Planning Phase Syndicate. If you would like to stick around... We will be doing a uh, Thrawn episode, what, five six and, and six discussion six um, for ah ah Ahsoka, where we will be talking about why JJ is wrong about his belief in Thrawn, because there's no <laughs> way JJ could be right. I mean, he's already been wrong once. Look, he's wearing a lion's hat, for Christ's sake. So we know Tanner has already been right more than once. But we are going to be doing our universe extended coverage tonight of the Ahsoka show. Epi whatever episodes we're on, six and seven, that's what we're on. Yeah, six and seven. I had that wrong. We're on episode six and seven. We are going to be doing that extended coverage here in just a few minutes. It will it will take me like two minutes to switch over and set up, but we will be coming right back with a spoiler content alert for Ahsoka. With that being said, thank you all for joining us tonight. We'll be back next week, 9 p.m. Eastern, 2100 Eastern, or 100 UTC hours. Oh, and if you enjoy XTC coverage, XTC is coming back. I don't know how much we're going to be able to cover. Um, my daughter is possibly having surgery. We'll find out this week. Um, so depending on when her surgery is and what's going on, we will be hopefully able to cover some of the XTC stuff. But JJ has been asked to play on a team not the USA team, JJ, but what team are you on? I am part of Team USA Islands uh, that represents uh, the U.S. Islands for uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, uh, Guam, and Hawaii. Uh, so I'm I'm honored to be part of that team. I am playing as the Empire player for that uh, that team uh, with Maui Mike Thompson as our leader uh, for the team. So we hope to 
to do well <clears throat> in XTC. We are in the same group as Team USA, uh, so we will be uh, playing up against them, uh, but we'll hope to have a lot of fun, and who knows? We might take it all the way. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining us tonight. We will be back next week with more Planning Face Syndicate.